Have you been diagnosed with methane predominant SIBO or do you have the symptoms of this, which include constipation, gas, and bloating? So if any of these apply to you, you wanna check out today's video because we're gonna talk about the natural treatment of methane predominant SIBO or chronic constipation, gas, and bloating. It doesn't always mean SIBO, but it is something to consider. And so you'll learn more about that today and how to treat that naturally. So stay tuned. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. I'm a family medicine doctor, registered dietitian, and functional medicine physician. So today we're going to focus on SIBO, which stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. There are two kinds that are often diagnosed on SIBO test, hydrogen predominant or methane predominant. The methane predominant is the one that's known to be more related to constipation, gas, and bloating. So join us if you want to learn more about the natural treatment of that. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time, I help motivated women and men rediscover their vitality, their energy, rediscover the magic of feeling well. And welcome back if you're joining me again. I appreciate you coming back. So today we're focusing more on our gastrointestinal health. And with that, there's a common term that's thrown around, even accepted by gastroenterologists today called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So basically it's what the name says it is. Your bacteria grow and the bad bacteria overgrow the good bacteria and then they cause all these symptoms. Now there can be SIBO that can cause abdominal cramping and diarrhea and loose stools and just the inability to really digest well. And then there's also SIBO that can cause the constipation and gas and bloating, kind of like when my last video I talked about IBS, kind of like IBS predominant, con constipation predominant or diarrhea predominant. And IBS can be caused by SIBO, so it's a good thing to check out with your doctor. So today we're focusing on one that doesn't get talked about as much and that's the methane predominant SIBO. Now, methane predominant SIBO is diagnosed, and, and hydrogen predominant are both diagnosed by a breath test. So um, the lab or the doctor's office gives you, um, you have to follow a certain amount of restrictions on your diet before the test. They give you a um, bag to breathe into. You have to ingest some of the lactulose or glucose, and then they test kind of how the gases, the hydrogen or methane gas, rise over time. So with methane predominant SIBO, you see the methane gas um, either start out really high or rise over a certain amount of time and stay higher than it would in a normal person that didn't have, or somebody not normal person, but somebody that didn't have SIBO. So um, the, like I said, the methane predominant causes constipation, gas, and bloating. So those are pretty common um, symptoms that people come in to see me at my functional medicine practice for. And we always want to consider SIBO as a cause. We often will do SIBO tests, but we'll also do lower intestinal tests and the microbiome tests that I've talked a lot about. And I'll link some of my videos to that. So why do we want to consider SIBO? Well, the methane producers are what are causing those symptoms. So if you don't get to the heart of the methane producers, the Methanobrevibacter smithii, um, which is a single organism species, if you don't get to the heart of that, then you're not going to relieve those symptoms. So the commonly prescribed Zyfaxin, which is prescribed in gastroenterologist's office and even some primary care doctor's offices, in the majority or at least a huge chunk of the time aren't going to completely treat particularly the methane predominant SIBO. It's pretty tricky to treat. So you don't want to just do the Zyfaxin for two weeks like they tell you. Maybe it'll work with you, but if you've done that and you're still having symptoms, there's when, there's when you, here's when you want to consider what we're talking about today. And like I said, some of the symptoms are constipation because the methane slows the transit time in our gut. So you're going to have slower bowel, your bowel movements aren't going to come as easily because things aren't moving through your gut as well. So that's one of the reasons um, that it causes constipation. Also, this type of SIBO can cause fat loss resistance. A lot of people in my office are complaining about, you know, living their, eating their diet as healthily as possible, eating a healthy, healthy diet, living a healthy lifestyle and still not being able to lose weight. Well, that could be related to this methanobrevibacter, uh, methanobrevibacter smithi or the methane predominant SIBO type. Um, because the archaea that they're a family, that they're a species of, um, can cause fat loss resistance, their obesogens. 
And so then also we want to think about the gas and bloating. It's another thing that it causes. And then when we have the constipation, that allows more bacteria to grow. So we kind of keep the cycle going. So if you just um, treat the zyfa with zyfaxin for, and maybe you kill off some of the bacteria, you might kill off some even more beneficial bacteria too, but you don't treat the actual constipation, you don't take care of the methanobacter, then it repeats the problem and the constipation allows more of the other types of bacteria to grow. So increases more of the actual SIBO of the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth of the other bacteria, then creating more of the hydrogen problem and creating this vicious cycle. So what I'm saying is when you get your SIBO testing done through your provider, I would like you to ask for one that has hydrogen and methane testing in the breath testing so that you know the situation on both of those. And I want you to pre-test and I want you to post-test after your treatment is done. It might be expensive if you have to pay out of pocket. Sometimes insurance covers it, but that's important to know that you've taken care of the SIBO and it's important to keep the constipation out of your life so that things are moving through and you're not more likely to get SIBO again. Um, let's talk about when you have a methane predominant SIBO, what type of diet is supportive? Now, a lot of people come to me and we do, we sometimes do the, um, the FODMAP diet because we usually use that so that people aren't for eating foods that ferment in their gut and then making their symptoms worse. It's usually a temporary thing. If you're finding you have to follow the FODMAP, low FODMAP diet, long term, then that means you haven't gotten to the heart of your problem. So you need to work with your provider more on getting to the heart of the problem of why things are, why you can't handle the fermenting foods. So a lot, but the fermentable carbs um, uh, can feed the bacteria and then that's why they are a problem. But a lot of times when you go low FODMAP, you're going low fiber, and then you can sometimes make your constipation worse. So that's why it might not be the best fit for methane predominant SIBO. Um, we want more of that butyrate to help than um, avoid the constipation. And the higher the butyrate, which is a, one of the fiber products, um, the lower the methane predominant or the methane producers. So we do want to have that fiber in your life when you're trying to treat methane predominant SIBO. Um, we also want to have polyphenols, antioxidants, um, brightly colored fruits and vegetables. So a lot of times with FODMAPs, you're eliminating some of those um, really fibrous vegetables and some of those really brightly colored fruits. And we do need those to help um, treat the methane predominant SIBO. So we want to eat beneficial foods like flaxseed, uh, berries, nuts, seeds. Um, green tea is really great. I always have some next to me. Um, and even isoflavoins, which have come from soy. So fermented soy can be very helpful like uh, tofu and tempeh and miso, those can be all really be helpful for methane predominant SIBO. But basically you also want to work with your provider on a, a, a type of elimination diet. You may not need to eliminate gluten and dairy if you have leaky gut along with your SIBO because those can make the whole problem worse, especially if they're making your constipation worse. So you really need to talk with your dietitian, nutritionist, your functional medicine doctor about what foods are making this worse. Um, so I do have a video, um, that talks about the five R's of a leaky gut and how to fix it. So I'm going to link that above so that you can check that out and kind of have more to go on when it comes to changing your diet to support a, a leaky gut, if you happen to have leaky gut symptoms. And then there's another video on the microbiome, which I'll, I'll put in the description too. So then let's talk, like we were going to sit, talk today about herbs and the natural use of herbal antimicrobials, we'll call them. So basically the herbal version of antibiotics are a little more gentle on the system and they are usually either as effective or sometimes more effective with SIBO, particularly when they're used in like a whole 5R approach like the other video I mentioned um, is gonna walk you through. So some of the ones that are helpful for methane predominant SIBO are allicin, which comes from um, garlic. And you want to look for that A-L-L-I-C-I-N. I'll put a, a, that spelled out below and an example of that on a label. So you do want to look for that. Oregano oil is another option or neem. And most of the time we recommend combining at least two of these together to be more effective for um, treating SIBO. 
And there's another product we've used for methane predominant Cenobo called Atrantil. And I will put a link to that description down below. And then there's an affiliate link where you can order it and we get a little bit of that. You don't get charged anymore, but the, it supports the channel so we can keep making the content. Um, but that's on Amazon. You can get it. You can get it a lot of different places. I've had patients tell me they've even found it at their natural food stores like Sprouts, but it's called Atrantil and I'll show a picture of it. And the tannins in there um, and the horse chestnut can be very helpful for treating methane predominant SIBO. And then, like I said, combine two of those. You also want to use a prebiotic called partially hydrogenated guar gum. I know that sounds like an additive that might be bad for you, but it actually is really beneficial when we're treating methane predominant SIBO. And the best type I found is in a trademarked product called Sun Fiber. And that can be in different brands, but the actual fiber product is called Sun Fiber. It's excellent because it it's very convenient. It, it um, dissolves automatically when you mix it in, unlike some other fibers. And the studies that have been done with combining uh, PHGG or partially hydrogenated guar gum with the either Zyfaxin, the antibiotic, or the herbal antimicrobials, they have increased the, the efficacy, the treatment of results of SIBO in huge ways. They've added a big percentage to the positive results with the treatment. So definitely something that or it has the fiber. So definitely something you want to consider or want to add. You may want to wait on any other type of prebiotic because if you've had this type of SIBO, you know that those prebiotics, um, some inulin, chicory root, those kind of things like kind bars, they're excellent, but they have that in there. And then some other bars and powders and probiotics will have the prebiotics in there so that you know if you've had this problem that that can make your bloating and your gas worse. So you want to wait a few weeks into your program before you add anything with any other prebiotic in it. And then you do want to choose a probiotic with certain strains in it. Uh, Bifidus lactis is a particular strain that can be beneficial for SIBO and lactobacillus ruteri can also be beneficial for methane predominant SIBO. So I hope all of this helped. I'm going to have a um, link in the uh, yeah PDF link in the description down below that walks you through the treatment, the natural treatment of SIBO, and some of the testing and um, both hydrogen and methane predominant SIBO. So if you want more information on both, you can uh, just sign up for uh, sign up with your email, and we will send you the PDF. And there's lots of other great PDFs on there. You'll also have access to 10% off our natural supplement dispensary, and that has um, the Sun Fiber and um, Atrantil and some of the beneficial, many other beneficial ingredients or supplements within this dispensary. So I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Thanks so much for joining me. Check out the playlist that I have attached here and please subscribe, share, and like this video so that we can keep producing content for you. And I post videos usually every Thursday. I am going to start changing it to Friday just so everybody, the subscribers know and the new people coming on. I will be posting on Friday instead. Um, and let me know in the comments if you've suffered from any of these problems and you're needing more guidance or what you found to be beneficial for you. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next week.